Very pleased to have with us for a live edition of the Curator's Corner. The guys from the NRA's National Farmers Museum, Jim Sapika. How you doing, sir? Doing great, Cam. Good to be here. Well, it's great to have you in studio. Phil Schreier's with us as well. Phil, thank you, sir, for your time. Our pleasure. Thank you. And I, I'm so excited. I never get to do these. You know, it's always <laughs> John Pop or Cameron Gray. It's been a while since I've had a chance to do a, a Curator's Corner. You brought with you a, a fantastic-looking revolver. What are we looking at here? Well, we have a Colt single action army, and what we thought we might do is kind of do the uh, type of thing we do for the Guns and Gold show, and that is take a look at it, talk about what it might be worth, talk a little bit about the history of it. Okay. This, one's, uh, this one's kind of a special one. Um, it's a classic Colt single action army. Everybody knows it from the Westerns. It's uh, uh, probably one of the most recognized handguns in the world. Introduced 1873, and Colt is still making them, uh, still making them today. So, uh, and a number of other people make clones of them too. Right. So a classic design, a, a well-loved design. This gun is a, a great old original, first-generation single-action army. And if uh, someone brought this into Guns and Gold, we'd take a look at it and try and figure out what it's worth. Now, any real Colt single-action is going to have some good value to it. They're very, very collectible. Uh, this one, uh, uh, serial number would put it about turn of the century uh, production, about 1901. Uh, ones that are made prior to 1898 will bring a, a little bit of a premium. Okay. Uh, this one's uh, pretty much a no finish gun, pretty much a gray patina gun. Uh, other than that, it's pretty nice condition. Has the original four and three quarter inch barrel length. That makes a difference if the barrel's been bobbed or altered, but this one's uh, pretty straight. It, uh, it looks like one of the serial numbers been remarked. And if you're, uh, you're looking at these for authenticity, all of this stuff makes a difference. Uh, uh, a number of years ago, there was a guy in Iowa who was making a cottage industry out of taking new single actions and filing them down and turning them into antique ones. Now, not only is he defrauding uh, his customers, but the ATF takes a very dim view of, of that type of activity. Yeah. So w are there any tips that you can give folks if, if they're looking just to make sure? Yeah. A couple of quick things to, to see if everything's on the up and up? Yeah, there are. There's a frame gauge you can use, but there, there's no, no substitute for actually handling a number of these, looking at them, looking and seeing if the die stamps are the same types as on the originals. And this one has... Uh, uh, a marking that's probably been changed on it at some point in time. The uh, the die stamps are not quite correct. It also has a number of uh, kind of obscure stampings that have been added to it. But it looks like it's a real single action army. Pretty well worn. Grips have been replaced uh, with an old style of imitation ivory grips. Uh, overall, this gun just is a, a nice Colt single action army. Uh, uh, no finish. Probably would be a two thousand twenty five hundred dollar gun. Okay, uh, but uh, there's more to this particular one that uh, Phil's going to fill us. I in had on. a feeling there might be <laughs> more to this particular fire. Yes, Phil, elaborate if you will. Well, there's a reason why this two thousand dollar gun is being insured <laughs> uh, for over twenty five thousand dollars right now, and that's because those extraneous markings on the gun uh, are the initials H O P for House of Props. And then the uh, gun was eventually, uh, that was a Hollywood prop company, and then the gun was sold to Ellis uh, Props. And we have the records on the gun. We know that it was used in John Wayne's movie, Rio Lobo. It was used in a number of Western television shows, including James Garner and the new Maverick series. But most importantly, it was specifically this gun and number, hence the yellow grips, uh, rented by John Wayne personally, to use for interviews and advertising uh, campaign promotions for his very last film, The Shootist, in 1976. Wow. So he actually personally selected this one to use in the promotions. This is one of the, one of the guns that he personally uh, had configured with his standard uh, barrel length and yellow grips to, uh, to use uh, for fo fo photography and uh, television interviews during the advertising campaign for his last movie. Very cool. And this is one of the many firearms. Is this on display right now, Jim, at the National This Farms is going Museum? on display. This is going into our Hollywood Guns exhibit. Uh, we're bringing in some new items there. We're also opening a new museum in Springfield, Missouri, at the Bass Pro flagship store there. We're going to open that summer of this year. It's going to be very cool. It's going to have a big Hollywood gun element there, too. So we're, we've got the displays at both locations. And uh, it's great to have this one. We've got another John Wayne gun a lot like that, don't we, Phil, that has that same type of grips on it? 
We do, and uh, even an Audie Murphy gun that looked almost identical to the same one John Wayne used. So wow, what we've done is there are 105 guns in the current Hollywood gun exhibit, and we used to change out that William B. Ruger gallery almost every year, every year and a half or so. But uh, it's been so popular, why fix it if it's not broken? So we're going to keep Hollywood guns permanently, but we're going to rotate what's in the Hollywood Guns exhibit. Very uh, cool. So it'll be like seeing the same title movie but a different <laughs> plot every time you come into the museum. And what goes from Fairfax will end up in uh, Springfield, Missouri, and then uh, back to Hollywood, and we'll get a new crop, and everybody will be able to see something different. That's awesome. Hey, Jim, and Phil, I'm sorry, we're, we're out of time here, but uh, you want to squeeze in a last comment, Jim? No, no, uh, we're doing good. We just like people coming out to visit the museum. Uh, they can... Visit nramuseum.com on the internet if they can't get by, but we're at the NRA headquarters here in Fairfax, Virginia, open every day of the year except Christmas, 930 to 5, with no admission. There you go. And, and we're course, on later uh, tonight, too. I was going to say, gold. NRA Guns and Gold, Monday night, Sportsman Channel. And if you go to the D.C. area on vacation or whatever and you don't make time for the NRA National Fire Museum, you have missed, seriously, one of the best treats in the D.C. area. You will love it. Guys, thank you so much for coming in studio. Really appreciate your time this afternoon. Thanks, Cam.